show. My name is Rob Daniels. Uh, we're a few minutes uh, late starting over. It's, you know, the first day jitters trying to get those uh, out of the way and, and, and technically set up here. So this is it. I've been so excited and looking forward to this day uh, because this is, uh, this is a huge deal to me, autograph and memorabilia. And a lot of people collect autographs and memorabilia. And at the end of the day, uh, there are two reasons people collect, I would have to say, and those are for uh, business purposes. And then there is the actual for, for love of collecting. Some people do both. Some people uh, do both. So we'll get to all that and we'll talk about that a lot on this show. And uh, first, so I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. So uh, again, my name is Rob Daniels. I have mostly a radio background. So sort of looking at myself right now is a little... Uh, little daunting, but hey, I can do television too. I've done some television in the past and this is why I've, I've sort of been looking forward to this challenge doing some television. And you might be wondering, well, Rob, this is this is unprofessional. You got the sunglasses upside down. Well, you've seen some characters on radio that kind of go over to TV. They're, they're, they're on-air character and they they wear the glasses sometimes on television. Sometimes they wear them the other side, you know, this way, maybe, you know, just go. Maybe this is a little better, no? The only reason I do this is because it's kind of like one of those things uh, where I used to be a baseball player myself and uh, and I collect baseballs, but I used to be a baseball player myself. And a lot of us, we just have some fun by wearing our sunglasses backwards, upside down. And you'll see it nowadays. You see Bo Bichette, the cool cats around the league that they, they wear their, their glasses. Sometimes it goes like this, like, you know, they're, they're going to go like this and this is their, this is their sunglasses, right? You know, that's, that's the look, right? So I do that. And this has sort of been a thing. It's kind of like a, a wannabe major league baseball player. That was my dream. My initial dream was to be a major league baseball player. So I kind of do the things that I can still do control the controllables as Dwayne, the rock Johnson likes to say, and I, I like to try and dress like someone that works in baseball. And, uh, well, I do uh, behind the scenes a little bit. Uh, but here, here's a little example. I'm wearing uh, my little Blue Jays golf shirt here and uh, got my shades upside down. So, yeah, that's, you know, baseball players, they kind of dress like that. They do that. And so I've kind of done the same thing. I, I kind of dress like it. I'm, I'm, I'm a radio broadcaster though, and I'm a proud radio broadcaster at that. I've been doing that for, for 20 years, currently a freelancer uh, on Hamilton's 1029 K light and on Virgin radio in Kitchener, Waterloo in the Ontario area. And that Virgin radio on the FM dial is 105.3. So I've been doing that and I've been on the radio mostly for the last 20 years in certain different markets across Canada started out in uh, started out luckily in Toronto working an overnight show ended up in Kitchener Waterloo hosting an evening show and uh, then I also um, I just want to see if I can maximize this a second here no I'm trying to see if I can maximize my screen okay Exit the full screen. There we go. I'm, I'm just learning. So give me a second. Uh, okay. So get back to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, ended up in Kitchener, Waterloo doing an evening show and then headed out uh, 3,000 miles across Canada and hosted a midday, a network midday show, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Okanagan Valley, which aired in Kelowna, Penticton, and Vernon. And <clears throat> Excuse me. I was also on a AM radio station as well, uh, playing some classic hits there. And that was a lot of fun. It was a little too far, but I always had the, the dream and the desire to live in British Columbia. And if radio could take me there, um, that's what I wanted to do. So that's what I did. Ended up in British Columbia and did it for a year out there. And it was time to try and get back closer to family. I was hoping to. And Montreal is another market that I had a ton of family in. I thought, you know what, maybe I'm going to get to Montreal and uh, see if I can get there. The only way, though, is if I could get to the one, one of the only English speaking radio stations in Montreal that I thought that I had this vision that I thought I could work there one day because it was the format that I loved. And it was like one of two stations that I think I could have worked at at the time. And luckily I got in. It was hard work, though, and they, they liked my sound. And, uh, and then I moved 3,000 miles back across the country, this time from 
Okanagan Valley, British Columbia to Montreal, Quebec. Did a two year stint out in Montreal, hosted an evening show there, was a writer for a popular countdown show there and produced on air with Ryan Seacrest while I was there and then ended up back in Toronto uh, after a couple of years when, uh, when Seacrest sort of fully took my job and I wasn't um, doing what I had moved out there for initially. I was still luckily full time, but I, I, it wasn't what I moved out there for. So I, I found um, an opportunity that was more me back in Toronto after that at KISS 92.5, ended up there a couple of years and then sort of my resume has been revolving after that because radio sometimes can, can be like that. You sometimes do a couple of years here or you, you, you are on a station um, in the greater Toronto area. You may end up in Barrie, Kitchener, Waterloo. And that's what I've sort of done. I was restructured a couple of times. Um, it's a tough industry like anything else. So, um, and, and it, you know, has currently led me to being on a radio station. I've, thoroughly enjoy and I feel like I fit the music and I fit the format and the, the listenership and the content I love to bring to the table as well uh, to this adult contemporary radio station. So I, I highly suggest you give it a listen sometime. 102, 1029 K-Light in Hamilton. Uh, currently my good pal, uh, Darren Laidman is on the air there. Um, but hopefully you're, you're, you know, we're a lot of people are millennials. They can do two things at once. Maybe you have the radio on in the background. You can, you can listen to this incredible autograph and memorabilia show that I got here for you. It is the first day. So we're going to kind of like do introductions, give you a little bit of background about some of my stories. I know I'm going to have like a ton of guests on this show as we move forward with it. And I cannot wait to reveal who those guests are that you might uh, find me sipping on coffee once in a while, which is, I, I drink a lot of coffee. Do you drink coffee? Here, just one sec. I drink a lot of coffee. So, and I have my bottle of water. Uh, so let's let's get to it. I mean, I wanna tell you about the, the platforms first where you can catch this television show that airs on multiple platforms, which is incredible. So today we're live right now on the Bard Burner app, Zingo TV's app as well for, I mean, you like social media, right? And if you're on social media and you wanna be you know, on your, pref your preference of social media, well, you can watch this show on social media, which is on the Barton Burner Facebook page, as well as Spanglish Sports World page. Eduardo Harari, my good pal, Edward Harari, Eduardo Harari, who's got a show on the Barton Burner Network as well. It's on his page, as well as uh, Joseph Pasek. I, I hope I pronounced his last name right. Um, he, it's on his Facebook page as well, okay? And Twitter, Periscope, Barn Burner Live, Spanglish Sports World, YouTube, the Barn Burner page, Spanglish Sports World page. And if you've got Zingo TV, please, please tune in. Channel 250 is what we're on each and every Tuesday between noon and 1 p.m. So it, you got lots of outlets. And the thing is, if you don't catch the show live, so let's say you're watching right now and noon doesn't work for you every Tuesday. Well, that's okay. But the Barn Burner Network uh, Incorporated is going to re-air this show 48 hours after it happens. Okay. So you'll be able to catch the show as of Thursday afternoon for the remainder of the few days leading up to next Tuesday. And, and you can catch that show on 122 different platforms, 122 different platforms. Is that incredible? Or is that incredible? I mean, there, there is no alternative 122 different platforms, which you can find out on, uh, well, I've loaded it up to my social media pages. You can catch it on, on Barn Burner's website as well and through their social media networks as to the, it's like literally a graphic as to all the uh, actual outlets. You can listen to this show once it's available a couple days after it airs, okay? So we're live right now and, and I'm so grateful to be here, like I've said. And, uh, you know, I think what is going to I think that the point of this show is to really showcase the love for autographs and, um, and collecting memorabilia, because that's why I do it. And I want to hear from a lot of people that, that do it as well. I certainly want to hear from, from people that do it from a business perspective, but my main reason for doing this show is to meet all kinds of people that, that do what I do, uh, which is, which is collect for the love of it. And we'll talk about different types of collecting and how it relates to certain people. There are, you know, 
obsessive collectors, then there's casual collectors, and there's a few people in between as well. So let's get started for today. Uh, my name is Rob Daniels again, the new guy here to the Barn Burner Network. I'm gonna take that sip of coffee. So, how did I first get interested in autographs and memorabilia to even bring you a show here uh, today and each and every week to the Barn Burner Network? Well, I'd say it all started with um, being fascinated with signatures. Okay, like I, I remember being a kid and I would practice signing my autograph over and over and over again. And I know I'm not like a, a somebody, you know, I'm a, okay, I'm a radio guy, I'm a television guy, I'm a, I'm a public figure, you could say, but I'm, I'm not like a sports icon. I'm not a, I'm not a musician who signs a guitar, but I just, I was fascinated with signing my autograph and I wouldn't give it to anybody. I, I would show my brother and I'm like, hey, let's see your autograph, Eric. Or I tried to make up an autograph for my brother, whose name is Eric, by the way. And I'd, I'd, I'd try and make it for him. Um, I'd say, this is your autograph. Okay. So you, you got to sign your name like that. And then I, I keep scribbling my autograph and I'm like, this is interesting. This has got to lead to something. This is starting. This is like, I'm kind of fascinated with signatures. So what, what does this kind of like lead to? So, um, it became this thing where I, I, growing up, I was a fan of the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs at one certain point. Right now, I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. I've been for the longest time, for about a good uh, decade and a half or so. But as a kid, I was kind of conflicted. Family living in Montreal, family living in Toronto, and I was, I was both. So, what would I do? I found out, well, they, I think there was like an advertisement or something where you could mail in autographs to uh to toronto maple leaf players at maple leaf gardens um excuse me a second i'm just going to check that okay uh close that window so you could you could mail in let's say a photo of a toronto maple leaf player your favorite player to maple leaf gardens and the chances are at that point in time they would autograph it for you. Whoever you were sending it into, they would autograph it and they would send, and they would mail it back. And I was just like, you know, on cloud nine, it was like, you know, when you go to McDonald's, when you were a kid and you get those, those sports cards with your meal and you open up the pack and you're like, Oh my gosh, I got Wayne Gretzky. I got Yarmir Yager. I got all these incredible players and you start collecting them. Right. And I had this fascination with autographs that, and I was like, please be real autographs when they send them back. And I would always analyze them. I had this analyzation, like, I'm like, yep, that one's real because I could see there was a smudge mark one time, or I could, I could really tell what a Sharpie looked like. And, and it wasn't a fake Sharpie. Sometimes um, I would take chances. I would be like, I think I did it after I wasn't a Maple Leafs fan. Like I, uh, you know, I saw Mike Gartner, one in my basement at one point. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember this. And I tried to like scrub it with my with my finger and be like, is this is this real? Is this and it turns out that it was you know it wasn't a real one. And you know, you could kind of tell. And I, I remember I got one from Felix Potvin as well. I wasn't quite sure if it was real. I, I saw Wendell Clark one I got. That was real. And I could tell, and you, you could just kind of tell after you collect it for what, what, what is real and what um, isn't real. So that sort of was my starting point with collecting. And I, you know, it, it and there's, there's just a certain feeling inside when you receive an autograph that it's like a childhood boy, you know, this boyhood feeling or any child for that matter, it's a boy or a girl getting their favorite candy at their can at the candy store or, you know, for my daughter, for let's say if I get her a chocolate egg or she loves a kinder surprise, uh, if I get her that after school and it's like, wow, she's on cloud nine. Right. And I, I and I love that feeling for somebody and including for myself when I've collected over the years that you, you never really uh, that that feeling never really gets tiring of receiving an autograph and in special ways too special scenarios, circumstances, where you are. I think there's, I think in-person autographs are a lot better than, than mailing out and trying to contact over social media. I think being in person somehow 
is is a lot more special. And now, of course, now we're dealing with COVID-19 and that doesn't make things easier for trying to get autographs at a, at a, at a collectible show, let's say, or trying to meet someone in person, line up for autographs. It's COVID-19. What are you going to do? So we're kind of like in a stalling period, the autograph industry, I would imagine, it, you know, mostly online, people are going to sign stuff, let's say private signings and, and the autographs are going to go up for sale and people are going to try and buy them online. Right. Well, I, for one, am not the biggest fan of that mailing in. I haven't done it much. I'm more so someone that shows up in person because I love shaking the person's hand and saying, nice to meet you. You inspired me throughout life. And I'm a big fan of, of you as an athlete. So, <coughs> excuse me. That is um, sort of how it started for me. And then um, after the Leaf stuff sort of ended for me, I, it continued, but it continued in a different direction. It went baseball. And baseball is what I've more so been fascinated with with my entire life uh, in terms of sports, baseball and hockey, but more so baseball and the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, and I have different passions when it comes to baseball, but specifically when I was a kid, it was, it was more so showing up at batting practice at Rogers Center in Toronto. And that's the key. If you, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the, the phrase early bird gets the worm. Well, how true is that when it comes to autographs in baseball? Because I, listen, I can't, I can't speak on behalf of soccer and football much, or let's say tennis, um, or, or even, you know, if you're a collector of Hollywood paraphernalia, let's say, I, I can't speak much of that, but baseball and hockey and a little bit of, let's say bands and such, cause I've, I've worked with musicians as well that, um, that that's the, you know, the early bird gets the worm. So what do I mean by that? You, you show up at Rogers center, let's say for a one Oh seven PM game as a, as a kid, I'm showing up for a 1 PM game at, I want to say when I was a kid about 10 30, 11 in the morning. Yep. I want to be there even before batting practice starts. I remember as a kid growing up that Shannon Stewart, would pull up to the parking lot outside the dome, Cito Gaston, and they would actually hang out with the fans for a good 10, 10 minutes or so around the car. Shannon Stewart would share what kind of music he was listening to. Cito Gaston would shake your hand kind of thing. And, and this, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people that might think, well, this is kind of like a stalking scenario. Why would you do that, Rob? Why would you, it, you know, it wasn't really like that. It was more so fans waiting you know just to see if they can get a glimpse of their their favorite stars you know and it, it was at the ballpark i mean so you're there early and you get and and it's not like i mean he could have said he had to go shannon stewart which he did eventually but it was like 10 minutes and of him happily showing what kind of music he was listening to what amps him up on game days and he's like yeah all right gotta go warm up all right gotta, you know nice to meet you kind of thing and those you'll never forget. Like you don't forget those run-ins that happened to me at like 15 years old, I'm 36 now. So I, you know, I think that is, is kind of special and you go there, you go for batting practice and chances are if you're there early, someone is going to sign autographs, especially on a weekend. You're going to, you're going to the ballpark. You want to bring your kids, let's say, or even a few, if you're a big kid like me, like I remember going with my brother and my brother, <laughs> My brother knew that he was the bait when he was a kid. And we kind of had an understanding like that because he loved watching baseball, but he didn't really care much for autographs, but you know, he was the little guy. So, Hey, throw the ball to the little guy. Cause I loved collecting major league baseballs. You know how much a major league baseball costs, like an actual major league baseball, what they use every single game. One of those things in, in, in a gift shop is like 40 bucks, $40 for a major league baseball. So, you know, that's what you do. You go early and you try and catch some baseballs and you try and see who's signing. And I've, I can't even tell you how many numerous stars I've seen signing along those sidelines at Rogers Center, at Skydome, whatever you want to call it. I mean, if you ask me, I wish it was still, I wish it was called like the Rogers Dome, just to keep that dome feeling in there. I got a lot of special memories with my dad from back there where it was, you know, the Skydome and I was seven years old and sitting up on the 500 level watching the blue Jays and the Yankees, um, you know, in a very close seven, six game and the blue Jays came out on top. Um, and this, this sort of goes hand in hand. Cause look, 
get the Blue Jay shirt, and it was it's the day after they totally uh, tore it up last night at uh, at Salem Field in Buffalo against those Yankees. So let's hope we can make it to the playoffs. By the way, uh, exciting time for those Blue Jays uh, in a very odd type of shortened season. But nonetheless, we have baseball, which is great for a lot of people. Some people still question it. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle. I don't really know, but I think it's because of what's going on with COVID. Uh, That's a separate story. But let's get back to what you do, you know, uh, at the ballpark. That's what I would would do at 14 or 15 years old is I'd try and see if I can, you know, you call out the players' names. Hey, can you you sign this, uh, you know, this baseball, this 8 by 10 picture? A lot of them are busy. A lot of the ball players, be honest with you, they're they they hear it every single day. That's the real truth. They don't they some days they feel like they can sign, some days they can't, and they're very they're creatures of habit, baseball players. So with being a creature of habit, you uh, ideally have a regimen every single day, and and sort of autographs take you into outside of your regimen sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they've, they've already done what they had to do. And uh, because it all depends on game times, right? Some games are seven o'clock. Sometimes they're three in the afternoon. And then the next day followed by a one o'clock game. So I'd say the best time to catch the blue Jays signing autographs, or you want to see them in batting practice and and chances are they're going to sign more is on a Saturday, Sunday home game because that's those are junior jays days those are the days that uh, they're a little more um easy going around the ballpark because it's it, there's a lot of activities going on they want to sign for the kids and y- you don't have to worry about being a big kid i mean you can you, you, you kind of have to go with your son or daughter to make it <laughs> look like you know um like if i were to show up in a suit one time um it wouldn't you know, it wouldn't go over so well asking for an autograph because it's kind of like, okay, after the game, I'm going to see this baseball I sign on eBay, let's say Aaron Judge from the New York Yankees would say, or Bo Bichette from the Toronto Blue Jays. And, you know, so that's what they kind of think. I think they're concerned a lot with that their autograph is going to make money for somebody, which, I mean, if you ask me why, really, why would you care? Because... I mean, you're, you are who you are and, and people ideally want to have your autograph. So that you should take that as like a compliment. I, I would take it as a compliment. So who cares what they do with it? Why, why would you question it? It's, it's a fan that loves what you do for a living and looks up to you and is fascinated that you're a baseball player. So be grateful that someone's asking for your autograph. I know you might get it a lot, but you never have to, you never lose that feeling of, of feeling grateful for a fan. So that's where I, you know, I, I would go is batting practice. If you're interested in baseball autographs and um, there's a lot of things that go on with autographs that you have to be aware of to uh, in terms of when you collect and uh, or what you collect, if you want it to be valuable. Okay. So you want your autographs to be valuable, then you have to know what you're doing. And like, that's what I've sort of led to is that I I'll be honest with you. Totally, totally honest with you. I have never sold an autograph in my life ever. No, never sold an autograph. Um, I've come really close, but I've never sold one, but I try, I really try to, um, Excuse me, I should turn my phone off. Uh, yeah, I should try, you know, I really try to get autographs that would be valuable. And and I collect them and I keep them for as long as I can. I have zero interest in trying to sell them. I would one day maybe pass them down to my child or to a family member that I think would really um, deserve them or want them and have that same passion I do because I am someone that likes to give. So that being said, I've made a few mistakes and I think you're going to make a few mistakes when you're, let's say a starting out as a collector and mistakes are okay. You're going to make them. I still make them. The key is to try to make less of them if you can and try your best, but don't be so hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up, but I've made mistakes 
And I'll tell you a couple of them. One of them was being at the ballpark. And I remember collecting that, like, I, I loved getting baseball signed. And getting baseball signed, you, you, you sort of have to keep the stars on separate baseballs, okay? And you, and you want them to try and sign the sweet spot when it comes to a regular baseball. What do I mean by the sweet spot? Well, it's the middle of the baseball, like that middle portion, which I'll show you uh, on the show today. And, you know, if it's a, if it's an, a, a ball that is an emblemed ball, like the, or, or a stamped baseball, I should say, let's say it's a World Series baseball, so it's like, or a special 40th anniversary of Blue Jays baseball, and, they, and that season they have a stamp and you want, a signature under uh, on that baseball, then you want it underneath. You, you, there's there's two schools of thought to those ones. With the stamp, you can have the autograph underneath it, or you you have them sign the sweet spot. And they're both equally as valuable, I would say. Maybe one a little more than the other. Depends on who you're, who's grade grading it. If you're going to go uh, get it graded, excuse me. But every uh, time you get that signed, you, you want it on the sweet spot or you want it underneath the stamped signature of, let's say, the 40th season or World Series baseball. So that being said, the, I've made that mistake where I, you know, being a kid at the ballpark, I remember having this one baseball. I was so stoked that I had this baseball. I had like Woody Williams sign it, uh, Chris Carpenter, and Brett Saberhagen, Pat Henkin, and this is all over the place because you're, you're talking about different players on different teams all signing one baseball. Wrong, Rob. Wrong way to do it. And you don't want to do that. If you, if, you want, if you want multiple signatures on one baseball, there has to be a theme to it. That's the best way to collect, if you ask me. I mean, go ahead and have whoever you want on a baseball, but if you want some sort of simplicity to your collection and sort of the proper way of doing things so something will be valuable down the line, then you want that baseball signed by a full team. So acceptable on one baseball, let's say, that's a major league baseball, the entire team of the New York Yankees, the 2020 New York Yankees, or the 2020 Toronto Blue Jays, not the 2020 Toronto Blue Jays and the 2020 New York Yankees on one baseball. That wouldn't make sense. Now, Maybe it would make sense on a World Series baseball if Toronto played the New York Yankees in the World Series and it was like a World Series 2020 baseball and you get, you know, all the blue. I don't even think they'd all fit. I think what you'd want to do there is probably have the Yankees on one World Series baseball and the Blue Jays on another World Series baseball. So I made that to top off my mistake, you know, that baseball with Brett Saberhagen and Chris Carpenter and Pat Henkin and Woody Williams. I get Mark McGuire, Mark McGuire on that baseball. What? And he didn't sign in regular penny, signed in like a Sharpie. So that's another mistake because you want baseballs to be signed in uh, those regular Bic, like sharp point pens. Like, you know, what can I show you if I can? So we're going to use a lot of props in the show at times. Okay. Um, so let me, you know, I'll show you what I have here. So what we can do is, for instance, something like this, okay? It's like a Bic pen, okay? You can see. And that, try and get it up close. You know, something like that is okay on a baseball or, um, I don't have another one on me, but I'll, you know, it's, it's, it's the non Sharpie, um, something that doesn't leave a wet mark on, on a baseball, like a Sharpie would. And that's what you want on a baseball when you, when you get an autograph, because that's more valuable and it has always been shown to be more valuable and it looks nicer on a baseball. You want to save Sharpie for an eight by 10 glossy photo or a 16 by 20 glossy photo. That's where you want to save it uh, for. So there, there's certain pens for certain things or memorabilia, I should say, that should be 
autographed. So, um, let's go on to, uh, so that was my mistake. And I think uh, with mistakes, uh, it, it becomes a learning process. So, you know, at the time, a major league baseball was maybe about $20, $25. So that baseball, like I still, I still have it, I think, somewhere buried in my basement. But it was a mistake baseball. And it's kind of like a waste of $25, if you ask me, because it's, it's not special anymore. I should have had Mark McGuire on one baseball. Mark McGuire we're talking about here. And I totally messed that up. And I'll tell you about another mistake, because I love to take baseball road trips to the United States specifically, because that's my fascination with baseball, along with loving the Toronto Blue Jays is, and I, and I know I'm not the only one because in previous years, not including COVID, I have seen the amount of Blue Jays fans that follow the team on the road, doesn't matter which ballpark, all across the United States, you will see Blue Jays fans at these ballparks. And I'm one of them. Yep, you got them right here. I'm one of them. I've been to a lot of ballparks across America, major and minor league ballparks. And that's my fascination is to go to those uh, ballparks and watch baseball. I, I could sit there for hours just watching baseball. And, and going early, like I did as a kid, you know, I still would be like, holy cow, like a kid in a candy store. If a minor league baseball came my way, a foul ball, and I caught it or someone threw it to me and I keep it, I, I have a few because that's what happened at a, at a few ballparks. I still have the dream of uh, going out to California. I haven't seen their ballparks yet, uh, both major and minor league. Hopefully one day I can uh, achieve that. That is a dream of mine, but I do that, um, once a year. And this, I'm kind of sad because, uh, COVID ruined that this year. I wasn't able to, um, to do that. I mean, COVID is obviously more important and what people are dealing with, uh, and including myself, we could all, you know, we all have to watch out and, uh, and be cautious, but I'm, all I'm saying is in a non COVID year, I would have, um, you know, I, and I go with people that have the same passion. I, I try to go to ballparks in the U S and catch the blue Jays or go to a new stadium that I've never been to before. And I've been on several of those trips and it's kind of like my, my, uh, Zen, you know, you, you have a Zen moment sitting in the ballpark and it's, there's something about it being so peaceful. And so I go, but I try to also collect when I'm there. Uh, and then sit and finally relax and enjoy once the game is on. But I kind of run around the stadium and see things beforehand and try and see if any of the ball players are signing. And, um, you know, so that's kind of like where uh, I'm at with it. Um, and, 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 and hopefully that returns next year. I mean, I think a lot of people have that same passion, that same uh, mantra or, Zen moments when they're at ballparks, there's a certain piece to it. Like I said, like I said, so if, you know, a lot of people could get that back if we either can calm COVID down or find a vaccine, then folks can get back into ballparks because baseball, there's something so special about it. You know, the experience, the, it manages your mental health by being able to relax and be at a ballpark, eat a hot dog, have a cold one, and enjoy. And there's, there's something about that, that is, I love, you know, I try to stay away from the beer and the hot dogs just for weight purposes, <laughs> but once, you know, once in a while, I'm going to splurge like anyone else. I'm not perfect. So hopefully that returns next year. And I'd like to move on to, um, I got to work on my segues here, but you know, cause I haven't done television in a while. This is the first one in, in quite some time. But I want to I want to talk about most prized uh, autographs, um, and I have a, I can't really choose one. I've chosen two today for you, two. Uh, so I'll, I'll 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 share two of my most prized autographs with you today, and I can't really choose one. I have maybe like a top five. But I, I chose two for you, okay? And I'll, I'll give you the story behind each one as well, okay? So I, I'm going to be specific with you. Autographs are, um, it can become a, an obsession. So I try to limit what I collect. Otherwise, I think my wife would uh, <laughs> be like, Rob, it's getting a little 
be too much already. And she's, you know, it's almost at that point with how much I collect, but it's only really two specific things, baseballs and eight by tens uh, photos to be autographed. And a lot of those eight by tens or 16 by twenties are moments, special moments in baseball history that I like to collect and have them sign. For an example, I have a Devon White uh, picture of, of Devon White up against the fence, the 1992 World Series. You remember that, right? If you're a baseball fan, a Blue Jays fan, uh, I don't know if you're a recent Blue Jays fan, but if you rewind to 1992, you YouTube it, you'll see that should have been a triple play back in 1992 when Devon White caught this, uh, he made this catch up against the fence, the 400 mark at Rogers Center. And then he threw it back into the infield, hit the cutoff man, and they got a triple play out of the whole entire thing. But the umpire uh, called them safe. So it should have been a triple play. And the next day, if you actually see in the Toronto Sun, they showed that the, the tag was on by, by Kelly Gruber. He, he tagged the Atlanta Brave. That was, I believe it was Terry Pendleton. Uh, Pendleton. I'm not exactly sure. But that's, it was on the, you know, so I'm sure the umpire felt bad about that one. Uh, luckily, it didn't cost the World Series and the Jays won that year, but that was when they didn't have the replay and the overturn rule. So it was a tough one for us. So I have that autographed. I have that catch of Devon White up against the fence autographed because it's a special moment in Blue Jays history. Uh, same with Marco Estrada. You might remember a few years back, he he got us to Kansas City back to game six of the ALCS against the Kansas City Royals, and he put his hand up like this with his finger up above his head, like thanking the crowd and sort of um, thanking what he believes is the higher power above him. And there's, there's an eight by 10 of that. And I felt like that was a special moment. It, it kept the blue Jays alive a little bit longer in the playoffs that year. And I have that sign because it's a special moment. I have the blue Jays, Joe Carter image of him jumping around the bases uh, signed. So uh, I know this is the first show and I'm sort of diverting from what I was going to show you, which I will now, but that's a little bit about what I, collect. Okay. Uh, our moments in images and, and baseballs. So I don't, you know, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to seem like I'm harassing these players. I, I, over the years, I've been like very, try to be very professional about it in my, you know, adult years, I, you know, one autograph, two at the most, and I'm, and I'm thrilled with it. Cause I want, you know, one baseball, I'd love, uh, uh, you know, a great image shot. So I'll show you my two most prized possessions, uh, two most prized autographs, I should say, today. We'll begin with this one. And you might remember this blue jay. I mean, not might remember. You should remember. A legend at that. And boy, do I sure ever miss him. And I'm sure a lot of Blue Jays fans miss him. I, I see it on social media. Um, Roy Halladay. So if I get a little closer, right there. That right there is a... Roy Halladay autographed baseball on the sweet spot. If you look at it, look at these online nowadays, they're going for about anywhere between $500 and $1,500. Yeah. And I, do, I don't have it authenticated yet. Um, I haven't authenticated really any of my memorabilia because I just like collecting. So maybe one day I'll have that passage. I think the proper time will be is when I can set that up, when I can set that up, like have a man cave. Like I'm sort of in a transitional period now with my family where um, we're trying to save up for some renovations and we don't um, have our home up to par yet. So maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have that. And that's sort of like another dream and vision of mine is to, is to have that man cave set up where I can have everything I'm so proud of that I collected over the years set up and, and, and really look at those pictures and love the vision and love it for what it is and what it was and, and bring those memories back because it's my happy place. It really is my happy place to be surrounded by uh, autographs and memorabilia, uh, especially baseball and, and hockey. So how did I get that Roy Halladay um, autograph? Well, luckily a few years ago, and I'm going to, and I'm going to try and get him on the show at, at some point. Um, I was at the Canadian baseball hall of fame and I try to go there once a year for the induction day. And, uh, thankfully good friends with the, the, uh, the CEO there and the, uh, Scott Crawford, who I've known for several 
years now and there's a media day and we usually talk and I, and I get some interviews or I try to practice my interviewing skills with some of these players that are been inducted and, and they do some signings for fans and everyone there because it's a small town. You, you're in St. Mary's, Ontario. That's where the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum is located. Uh, yes, we do have a Hall of Fame in case you were unaware. I mean, there's Cooperstown and there is also the, uh, the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame museum in St. Mary. So I, you know, I was there and Halliday was inducted that year along with Vladimir Guerrero senior met both of them was sitting in for their, um, for their induction before the public came. And that was fascinating. Got to, to speak with Roy Halliday actually. And there's an interview that's actually up on YouTube. If you have a moment to take a look at that and uh, you can, you can type it in and Rob Daniels interviewing Roy Halliday kind of thing. And it was, it was one of those really fun interviews where I kept it light. You know, I'm not someone that knows stats and I'm not a money ball guy that, that knows trades and who to trade for and what kind of deals people should get all the time. I'm not really, I'm more of like a for love of the game kind of individual when it comes to baseball and hockey. So I kept it light, you know, asked them what his favorite sunflower seeds were. I asked them who, who was he most intimidated by at the plate when he was pitching on the mound fun content like that uh, instead of you know going back to stats and and does he remember you know who he struck out this year and, and bringing back up those those stats for him so I, I stayed away from that because there was a few other reporters that were asking that and there's nothing wrong with that it's just I don't that's not my expertise so uh, he signed that day and I was so um, grateful for it and I, I was so sad, like saddened, very, uh, very much so by, and I remember my cousin messaging me, you know, six months later after I met him, six months after I met him, he passed away, Roy Halliday. Um, and my cousin messaged me, he's like, uh, a plane went down in, in South Florida uh, or in Florida. I don't think it was South exactly South from us in, in Canada. And uh, the plane went down and I think it was Roy Halliday's. My cousin said, I'm like, no, no. Instantly flip on the news and to hear the, the devastating news. It was, it was really tough to take in because I felt a little bit of a connection to him. And I have a photo with him as well. Uh, hopefully I can share that on the show with you one day as well, where I got to shake his hand and, uh, or sorry, I, I had, we had our arms uh, around each other's neck type of photo. And then there was a photo, like an in-action interview shot, like where I was interviewing him. And, and it was, and that's what I wanted in my man cave is, you know, a photo uh, that eight by 10 of, of me and Halliday having a, a quick fun chat and that incredible baseball right beside it. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll get the proper casing for it. I'll make sure to. So I, it was a very special day that day when he got inducted. And I think, um, yeah, so it was, it was very special. And uh, I, there was one more I'd like to share with you. And that is this one. I don't know if you can tell that autograph. That right there is, I don't know if it's backwards for you or how you see it on there. Maybe I do it this way. See it better. That's Roberto Alomar. And I've, um, you know, I, I'm also a multi collector. So I have a few of Alomar's uh, because I like them on certain things. I, you know, I have Alomar on the sweet spot. I have Alomar on a 92 World Series baseball, 93 World Series baseball. I have luckily an Alomar 8x10 um, signed that he has uh, of when he was inducted into Cooperstown. Uh, so that, that really incredible shot of him, uh, you know, holding his plaque at Cooperstown. So that was, that was amazing. Um, and it, it was, so how I got Alomar's was being at Rogers center. I was at Rogers center and, uh, I was there for tournament 12. Luckily he was walking around and, uh, got his autograph there for that one. And, uh, and I, I'm also very giving when it comes to autographs. So, what I did that day for my buddy was that I blew up a 16 by 20 photo of my good friend, Phil, who I hope to have on the show one time as well. And it was a picture of Phil and Alomar at one event. And I got Alomar to sign that as well. And for my buddy, Phil's birthday, I, 
I framed it up or I, I got it into a nice top loader and printed it and Alomar had signed it and he was like on cloud nine when he received it because that's going right up in his room and and he loved it. So I'm very giving with autographs uh, as well. So we have four minutes left on the show here. This has been an awesome intro. You know, I'm going to have tons of guests on this show. Uh, I want to hear from people that have the same, same sort of stories or even different stories, whether it doesn't have to be the same, you know, whether it's collecting or whether it's selling, I want to, I want, I want to hear from some sellers. How do you, how do you do it? I don't, I don't really have that interest. Um, but I want to remind you again of where you can listen to this show or hear it. So again, today we're on the barn burner app, Zingo TV app, social media, Facebook, uh, barn burner page, Spanglish sports world page, Eduardo Harari page, Joseph Pesach, Pesach, uh, page twitter periscope barn burner live spanglish sports world and youtube barn burners page spanglish sports world page and tv zingo tv channel 250 so that's where you can hear us live each and every tuesday from noon to one and on 122 different platforms two days after that and that info is on barn burners website or on my social media pages you can follow me by the way and ask me any questions you may have and we can share them on a future show at rob daniels on air on twitter at Rob Daniels 1983 on Instagram and search Rob Daniels on Facebook. We can have a chat. If you want to be a guest on the show, if there's something that you want to show off uh, in terms of your autographs and memorabilia, I, I want to see it. I want to know because I, I, want, I know I'm not the only one. There's got to be more people that collect. I, I know there is. I've seen them at shows, but now is your time to shine and be on multiple platforms and show off what you got. Cause I want to see it. And we're going to, we're going to have a fun conversation about it. Okay. So let's do that in the future. I will have uh I will have, like I said, lots of guests um, moving forward, and I can't wait to bring those to you. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff moving forward. We don't have enough time for it today, but I think in the next show, I really, really want to talk about obsession with autographs. And we'll go back to the penmanship and what you should do on, on certain products being signed, where the signature should be located. This could be for hockey, for baseball, for, for golf. Uh, colors of the signature, how many signatures you want and being careful of smudging. We're, we're, we'll get into all that uh, in the next show, but I wanted to thank you for joining me on this first uh, episode of the Autograph and Memorabilia Show. My name is Rob Daniels from 1029K Light and thrilled to be here once a week on the Barn Burner Network. And uh, again, if you have any questions for me, bring them to me on social media and we will connect in time uh, before next week's show. It's been fantastic. Uh, a lot of fun. TV is is incredible. So thank you for joining me. Uh, and, uh, and I will see you next week. Okay, noon to one. And if you want more info, always, always, always go to uh, barn burner social media pages, or their website. It's a Tuesday afternoon, get collecting, figure it out, go online, maybe you buy something. Maybe someone donates something to you, but show it off to me in the future. I want to see it. I'll have more stories for you as well. And I look forward to hearing yours until next time.